Welcome to the Reverie Hotel. How may I help you? Greetings. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express, and we'd like to check in. The Astral Express? But I thought... Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information is recorded in your system. I see, but your companion said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. And you are... Me? Uh, I'm... Pom Pom. A new nameless who's also with the Astral Express. <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. We responded to the family's invitation before he boarded the Express. So, he wasn't registered in your system. <clears throat> Is it possible to accommodate him as well? Oh, I see. Another one of the Nameless had a similar situation. Seems like a lot of people are joining the Trailblaze these days. Since there's a precedent, it shouldn't be a problem. Just give me a second to contact your companions. I'm sorry, dear guests, but it seems I'm unable to reach the other members of the Astral Express. What do you mean by unable to reach them? My apologies. This is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, the system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. How about this? Give me their room number, and we'll go check on them ourselves. I'm afraid that's not possible. I need to verify both of your identities before I can share any guest information. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh... Welt? I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding Forced Awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution then? Are you saying we sleep here? At the reception? Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companions. It seems so. Oh, fudge! Look, nothing personal, but if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can, okay? Uh, please... Calm down, dear guests. I do recall that Mr. Sunday, the Oak family head, personally handled this issue earlier. Oh, please, wait a moment while I contact him. I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. <sighs> I have a bad feeling about this. You tried to contact them on the Express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> Something doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. Just don't keep me waiting forever. Don Hung seems pretty worried about his companions. I should give him some space. Stressing out about it won't help anything. Face recognition fails to... Greetings. I'm Cody of the Bloodhound family, head of security for the hotel. How may I assist you? Hello. So, uh, there's something I wanted to ask about. I've been hearing some unsettling rumors about certain incidents that might affect the Charmony Festival. Do you think there's anything to be worried about? I've traveled all the way from the Hayai Federation, and I don't want my trip to be ruined. Um, what do you mean? Wait, you haven't heard? I'm not sure where you heard those rumors, but they're completely baseless. I can assure you, as a representative of the Bloodhound family, that everything is going smoothly for the Charmony Festival. At present, all of the families are focused on making sure the festival starts on time. Even the Dream Master himself has arrived. 
So don't worry, your trip won't be in vain. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a relief to hear. She doesn't appear to be acting. So, it seems that even the hotel staff are out of the loop. <laughs> At my age, what's left for me to dream about? The Charmony Festival is about to start! I'm so excited! Hey! Are you guys here for the Charmony Festival too? Well, I didn't come all the way here specially for the festival. Honestly, I don't really even know what it's about. But I heard it's a lot of fun! Well, back in my home world, Anaria, we have festivals like that all the time. My dad threw me a birthday party one time that was just as extravagant as the Charmony Festival. Oh, come on! The Charmony Festival is a once-in-an-amber-era event! How can a birthday party compare? Well, you never know, right? Maybe on her world, birthdays only happen once in Amber Era. Anyway, let's forget about that. Have you heard about the, uh, unsettling things happening in the dreamscape? Unsettling things? What could possibly go wrong? It better not ruin the Charmony Festival! I've been looking forward to it! Relax. With a big event like this, there's bound to be lots of gossip and rumors. Don't worry. If anything does happen, the family will be on top of it. <sighs> oh, that's a relief. I didn't come all this way to see the festival go down the drain. Well, looks like I won't get any fudging clues out of these two. They're clueless. Back already? Hasn't she returned yet? Nope. I'm starting to wonder if sending her to contact Sunday was a good idea. Neither the staff nor the guests seem to know anything about what's happening in the dreamscape, and Wherever we go, all we see is people enjoying themselves. Definitely not a good sign. I agree. Another unusual thing is that the Oak family is supposed to be in charge of organizing the council and managing everything inside and outside the dreamscape. However, I walked around the hotel but didn't meet a single member of the Oak family on such an important day. Well, I'll be forked. If I remember correctly, the head of the Yoke family is that Sunday guy, right? We shouldn't linger here too long. Let's go back to the Express for now. Uh, not so fast. Have you ever robbed the IPC, bro? If you run away now, Everyone will be chasing after you. Are you suggesting we sit here and do nothing? I wouldn't say do nothing. But let's stay put for now. Even if the family has ulterior motives, they couldn't have anticipated us showing up here. We're the surprise factor for them. They don't want to attract unwanted attention from certain outsiders, so they won't do anything reckless. See? The IPC lackeys are keeping a close eye on this hotel. If I were a family member, I'd find an official excuse and keep the surprise factors here. If we just wait here, that would be like walking into their trap. Of course, we don't need to walk into their trap. I gave a backup plan to the Memo Keeper. If it turns out we won't be allowed to enter the Dreamscape, she'll order a drink for me in the VIP lounge at the hotel. In reality... A secret signal. That's right. Oh, a concrete object can indeed help the Memo Keeper establish a connection with you. But Boot Hill, if you have more backup plans in the future, I hope you'll let me know in advance. 
I'm sorry. But it's one of my quirks. I have too many unreliable friends. And if I reveal that I have backup plans, things can... Things can go awry. And that would leave all backup plans completely useless. How do we get into the VIP lounge? This is where my street smarts come into play. You can actually book a stay on credit, and the interest... You're the lobby manager, right? Yes, I am. How may I assist you? We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. We wanted to check in, but there's something wrong with your system. The lady at the front desk said she would contact the manager, but now she's nowhere to be found. Now, we've been waiting here forever, without any food or water. What the fork, man? Is this how the family treats its guests? Is this your idea of street smarts? Starting an altercation? It's called standing up for your rights. I apologize for the inconvenience. Please wait while we try to contact Mr. Sunday. I'll arrange two premium seats in the VIP lounge so you can rest there while you wait. <laughs> See? Just like that. Just... Uh, just... Don't call yourself nameless next time. Wow, this bar something else. Certainly worthy of the planet of festivities. Uh, one peach soul glad, shaken, not stirred. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey. I have an order for a bottle of Hasdana's White Oak. Can you help us find it? Hasdana's White Oak? Hmm. I think there might be a misunderstanding. We don't serve that here. Oh, no way. Are you sure you're not mistaken? If someone had reserved such a beverage, I would definitely remember it. It sells for hundreds of thousands of credits per bottle, after all. Uh, I couldn't afford to cover for such an item if it were broken or lost. That's strange. Well, could it be that the memo keeper couldn't afford it? Then what should we do now? Oh, no need to rush. Well, let's grab some drinks first. Maybe I arrived too early and she hasn't come yet. Let's see what kind of juice malts you all have here. Huh, well... Uh, give me a glass of Heenum Valley, 40 years. I'll have it neat. No ice. Well, that's the most expensive one on the list. You have a taste for the finer things. <laughs> it's on the house, anyway. What can I get for you? Anything you recommend is fine. Then I would recommend today's special, Glass Village. It's classic Soul Glad mixed with Laboom juice. It's refreshing and suits your cool demeanor. Hmm, just one minute. Ah, this flavor! Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Ooh! Really hits the spot. Truly the finest sherry cask aged malt juice in the cosmos. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel, Earth. Is that really something that humans enjoy? <laughs> hey, this guy doesn't know anything at all. As long as you're satisfied, dear guests, please enjoy. Let's give the memo keeper another half-system hour. If she doesn't show up, we'll need to come up with a new plan. In the meantime, let's take stock of the situation. What do you think? The situation is unclear. Something must have happened on the planet of festivities 
but the public is unaware of it. Someone in a position of power within the family must be covering it up. It's unusual for the followers of the Harmony to invite other factions, let alone the IPC and the Masked Fools. <sighs> if what you said about the Emanator of the Nihility is true, the situation in Penacony is a little complicated, to say the least. Actually, there's something else I'm concerned about. Regarding Acheron. As you know, the faction that follows the path of the hunt are some of the most dangerous folks in the cosmos to mess with. I mean, who in the right mind would impersonate the Sienjo Alliance or the Galaxy Rangers? It's like asking for a death wish. Isn't there a saying among the Sienjo people that, uh, the rainbow set lets their lux arrow do all the beaten. Talking. Do all the talking. Well, you know what I mean. Even though the Galaxy Rangers have been out of sight for years, we've been keeping an eye on this region. Even the dumbest criminals know better than to mess with the Annihilation Gang, much less the Rangers. But that Acheron lady... She doesn't seem like a lunatic at all. On the contrary, she's highly logical and organized. She knows exactly when to hold back and when to strike without mercy. And do you believe that someone like her would have an ulterior motive for impersonating a galaxy ranger? <sighs> I'm not entirely sure, but I do have my suspicions. Maybe she knows a galaxy ranger or... Perhaps she's trying to lure us out for some reason, which I can't figure out. Anyway, what worries me more are the anomalies within the family. They've summoned followers from various paths for the festival. No matter how generous such a gesture is, this move seems highly unusual. Unless the invitations weren't sent by them. Uh, if that's the case, it's even more intriguing that the family insists on organizing the Charmony Festival, despite the chaos. Maybe it's she pay the harmony pulling the strings. You find it beyond human understanding because it wasn't arranged by humans at all. People do stupid things out of irrational impulses. They abandon their principles when self-interest is involved. They believe in things they know they shouldn't, and fudge, they even break their own rules. But eons don't. They stick to their determined path and never turn back, even if they reach a dead end. You think Shipei's will is behind all this? <sighs> it may not necessarily be Shipei, but there's definitely some higher entity involved. I know it may sound pessimistic, but if human free will were reliable, why would we even need Galaxy Rangers? It's much simpler when you boil it down to the eons and paths. Like how Lon always follows the path of the hunt, or, or how the Express stays true to the Trailblaze despite Akavili's disappearance. But in my opinion, Akavili's fall holds significance for the Nameless. Oh. So you're saying the Nameless now have to take responsibility for their own choices because their absolutely right leader is gone? Exactly. I believe the purpose of the journey isn't just about following a path that's always considered absolutely right. It's more about... Doing your best to choose the right path for yourself among countless possibilities. Even with limited insight and judgment. I don't know what you've been through. But I agree that people must take responsibility for their choices. Because no one else can do it for them. That's why the Galaxy Rangers need to uncover the imposter. And figure out her true intentions. Just in case. I have a backup plan if the Memo Keeper doesn't show up. This is my final backup plan. I promise. 
You sure have a lot of cards up your sleeve. Well, going back to my old career would make things a lot easier. By the way, when you were walking around the hotel, did you happen to see any important looking guests? What's your plan? It's simple. We just grab some hostages and use them as bargaining chips with the family. Or maybe we can even take their identities. No need for that. We'll return to the Express now. Wait. Are you getting scared? <laughs> Draw your weapon. Let's make a big scene. Are you leaving, esteemed guests? Uh, would you like to cancel that as Donna's White Oak you just ordered? <clears throat> huh? As Donna's White Oak? But... Didn't you just say... Ha ha! Looks like you are a bit intoxicated, esteemed guests. Uh, you ordered a bottle of Asdana's White Oak just a moment ago. Hmm. Looks like your memo keeper friend has finally arrived. <sighs> oh, right. Sorry, my memory's not the best. You know, too many modifications and all. <clears throat> anyway, let me check. Well, fork me. It says Donna's White Oak, all right. And there's a note. I'll be waiting for you on the Astral Express. No mistake. That's her message to you. She knew the hotel wasn't safe, so she suggested we find another place. Well, looks like we took a detour, but now it's back to the Astral Express. So... What are we waiting for? Let's go. You're back? Two guests just boarded saying they were looking for Boot Hill, so I told them to wait in the parlor car. Oh, just in time. Two guests? Yeah, or two. Look, we welcome all passengers on the Astral Express, but sneaking in like that... You have no regard for etiquette! My apologies, Conductor. It was an oversight on my part. I assumed you were already acquainted with the Garden. Given the chaotic situation in Panacone, the Nameless are the only ones we can truly trust right now. You are the Memo Keeper. Pleased to meet you, Don Hung. I've seen you in others' memories. And as for Boot Hill, this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. I hope you enjoyed that bottle of Astana's White Oak. You sure have a refined taste. Finally, Memo Keeper. Well, let's cut to the chase. Spill everything you know. That's precisely what I intend to do. But before that... Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Black Swan, and I serve the Garden of Recollection as a memo keeper. As for Acheron's story, I'm sure she knows it better than I do. Greetings. I'm Acheron. What? You Garden of Recollection shirtbag! You betrayed me! I apologize, but she did that at my request. Due to certain reasons, I have been exiled by the family. Thankfully, this memo keeper came to my aid and helped me escape their surveillance unnoticed. To be honest, it was more like stalking than helping. And the process was far from unnoticed. But we did escape. I asked her to guide me to a place beyond the family's reach and to contact a few trustworthy individuals. Namely, all of you. Trustworthy? <laughs> Son of a nice lady! You think I'm dumb or something? How about this? I'll put a few bullet holes in your head and see what secrets spill out. Then, we can talk about trust. It doesn't have to be like that. 
I'm willing to answer all your questions, but not right now. If my cover hadn't been blown, we might have had more time, but at the moment, we don't have any other options. No other options? What do you mean? This is the only way I can ensure everyone's safety. I kindly request an immediate warp jump out of the Astana star system. <sighs> this passenger is requesting... As far as I can tell, she's not a threat and seems to be telling the truth. I've briefly traveled with your companions and know their whereabouts, Don Hung. Please rest assured, your nameless companions are safe, but they need our help. As for Boot Hill, you may have guessed. I've been waiting for you. Galaxy Rangers are known for their elusive nature and limited contact with each other. So this was the only way I could reach out to you. Only by doing this can I find a true Galaxy Ranger and fulfill a long-standing promise. To return his relics to their rightful owner. Someone once told me that every rainfall is like a gift from the heavens, a sign of their mercy upon the world. Raindrops are said to be the tears of the gods, shed in response to the sorrows of the world. Their constant pouring is a reminder that the gods haven't abandoned us yet. So... How long has this rain been going on for? I used to believe, just like you, that it would eventually stop. Years and decades passed. And in the end, such hope faded away before the rain did. Looks like the god you mentioned doesn't exist after all. Well, let me share a story with you. Mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Like those shadows on the ocean. Sin thirsters, the obsessions of the path striders, they emerge from the depths of Ix, seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms, they were once my dear companions. A group of galaxy rangers. Are you watching over them? Watching over them? No. I'm guiding them toward transcendence. It was a brutal war. A crusade that shook the universe. The universe witnessed the fall of Zulo, the Lord Ravager, but it came at a price. A price so hefty that only those who were there 
you'll remember. The unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. So someone must guide these lost souls to their life beyond. They were heroes in their time. And they shouldn't be reduced to mere puppets of nihility. As for me, I've suffered too many losses on that battlefield to advance any further. And that makes me the most fitting person to carry out this task. But you know, these sin-thirsters, they're not who they used to be. Does this seem pointless to you? Well, some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. <sighs> I can help you. For what? For the meaning of the nihility. That's what I've been seeking. I see. After all, this realm is off limits to ordinary souls, right? Thank you, stranger. I wish that you find what you seek. Before we part ways, I have one more question. It is true that their actions and even their entire lives may seem pointless from our perspective. But if, and it's just an if, if this is what the departed ones expected, should we try to change it? A good question, and a profound one. I don't know the answer. What I do know is that one day, I too will pass away. And when I bid farewell to this world, someone will stand at my grave and place a bouquet of flowers on it. <laughs>